what is going on in the React Native ecosystem and what are the packages and topics developers gravitate towards? These and other topics were discussed in the State of React Native survey introduced by Software Mention and we got the results. The React Native community has spoken, at least 2400 respondents were in that survey and we can finally see some trends as this is the third time the State of React Native survey was done. Because there are like 17 sections in this survey, I will shortly cover each section and the most important element and in the end give you my very own take on the current state of React Native. Alright, so let's do the state of React Native speedrun. The first section is more about some general data age. Interesting is probably that all company sizes are using React Native, even like the biggest companies. And besides that, I kind of felt really good that years of experience here for most developers was actually like two or three years and some had five to four, uh, four to five years, which shows it is still a good point to get into React Native. It is still early and you're not too late and we will come back to that at my own conclusion. Second section is about developer background. Once again, some general data. Most people, of course, come from React, but many people are actually also coming directly to React Native or are previous iOS and Android developers. So these combined also kind of almost make up the same amount as front-end developers. No matter where you come from, it is a good starting point to get into React Native from any angle. Besides that, the target platforms are still mostly native. People still want to mostly build Android and iOS apps. It sometimes feels like everyone's talking about web app and universal apps, but mm, it is still far beyond Android and iOS. The section about platform APIs doesn't tell me a whole lot. The only thing I notice is that how can camera be more used than the permissions API while you actually need permissions to use camera? What is going on here? The state management category is probably one of the most interesting as we can see some trends in the ranking. We see that Redux is declining from 85 to 78%, while things like Zustand or Zustand as we call it in Germany is actually rising. So don't be like fooled by this. It's going from 22 to 37%. Uh, same time, Yota is also coming up. MobX is new in this study. Uh, and Redux tool could also pretty high. This is the usage. So this is really interesting, especially if we now check out the interest, people are really insta uh, interested in the new stuff. Tenstack, Zustand, uh, Xstate, Yotai, all of these are pretty high up while Redux is really uh, slowly declining. Besides that, people have a really great experience with packages like Tenstack or Zustand as the actual would use again is increasing. And at the same time, we can also see that these things like Tenstack, Zustand have a high number of votings here on the right side, which is use again. Redux at the other hand, I think this is a very clear picture. In terms of data fetching, there's a pretty clear winner. Fetch API is used by most people as well as Axios because they're pretty easy, but at the same time, Tenstack is also on the climb. So Tenstack is really what I and most other people recommend these days to manage your asynchronous state or server state in your front end applications. It's also interesting to see that people are talking a lot about TRPC, but the usage of TRPC is just 13%. However, in interest, TRPC is actually at the top of this <laughs> ranking. So people are really interested in TRPC, probably because Theo is also pushing it a lot, but in reality, not a lot of companies are actually using it yet. The navigation category is really interesting and one of those things you should really keep an eye on. So I'm a big fan of Expo Router and we can see Expo Router exploding in usage from 12% before to 40% now. And I'm pretty sure 2024, it's going to be at like 60% at least. At the same time, React Navigation and React Native Navigation are still going strong. I'm not a big fan of all the other solutions. Yes, Solitro is cool and has some cool things going on but people are really most interested right now in Expo Router and React Navigation. Styling is another of these super interesting categories, probably one of the most interesting fields right now. There are so many solutions going on, it's hard to actually track all of them. Let's see. In terms of the general usage, um, style sheet API and inline styling are pretty high because these are still like the easiest things you can do. Um, at the same time, native wind is on the climb and Tamagui is on the climb and everything else is simply going down. So I really think it will in the end come down to native wind, Tamagui and one of these uh, style sheet APIs that are built in, which will probably take up most of the percentage on the market. However, if we take a look at the interest in these libraries, it's also very interesting. Tamagui is, of course, kind of hyped. At the same time, React Native UniStyles is pretty high on the interest chart, which I did a tutorial on. Check out the tutorial here on the channel. I also had Yetchek on the podcast 
Um, so if you want to learn more about this and what's going on, check it out. Besides that, of course, Restyle and Native Wind are still in here. So UI component libraries are kind of a bit out of fashion. Um, React Native Paper, which was one of the most used, is on the decline. We see React Native Elements going down. We have Tamagui in here as well, as it's listed as both a styling library and a UI component library. And we also got Gluestack UI, which is kind of the successor to Native Base, which is now uh, very hardly declining. The interesting thing that the, is that the usage of some UI component libraries is still pretty high. But I think this is just the fact that people used these libraries years ago and they are not changing to anything new because these are really entangled in your code. However, my feeling is that most of these UI libraries will leave at some point. Probably Tamagui will stick around. Uh, maybe Gluestack UI has a chance. But if you look at the web and what's going on, you see that Tailwind dominates. So we definitely want to see more of native wind in the future. And at the same time, things like ShadCN are becoming very popular. And we're probably going to see an approach like that for React Native as well. In terms of graphics and animations, it's a pretty clear picture. React Native reanimated owns that space. And at the same time, Kia is also on the climb, thanks to William Candillon and his great content, of course, around uh, Skia. But at the same time, people are still using the animated API or Lottie. Uh, so those are also still in the usage chart. And these are also usually the most interested. Reef or Rive is now also on that chart. I definitely have to check that out more. But if you now go to the sentiment split, it looks like people don't really like the inbuilt animated API a whole lot anymore. So this is like the negative uh, feeling about it, but people are really raving about reanimated. Just check this out, like everyone, <laughs> almost like 50%, but pretty much in terms of that rating, everyone would use reanimated again. Also, the great thing is that people seem to be really happy with this category, like 50% of people are happy and almost 20% are actually very happy and I kind of share that we have great graphics and animation libraries for React Native. Debugging is an interesting category that I will come back to in the end. For now, I just want to say a few things. People, console log still owns and you don't have to feel bad for using console logs. Everyone is using it. But besides that, we have great tools. We have Flipper and we also have now the Chrome DevTools from Expo, which are on the climb, but we still have a lot of problems. Mostly these are about connecting your debugger to the app or even picking the right debugging option. I sh certainly should do uh, a video on that. However, Expo is doing something about this and we're gonna see an improvement. So let's talk about this again in the end. React Native Features is a small but interesting category, um, but probably no surprise. The new architecture is something that people are most interested in, as well as the bridgeless mode, turbo native modes, uh, modules, and also custom native modules. I think it's pretty cool to see that in terms of the usage, Expo modules uh, are on the climb. So from 30% to 43%, I highly recommend them. It's unbelievable easy to use Expo modules. Um, and creating your own config plugins additionally with it is just a great user experience. All right, in terms of other app aspects, I don't really have a lot to say about these things. Yeah, people use Firebase, they use Sentry usually. Uh, the most interesting thing is, well, uh, one thing to note is that MMKV ranks really, really high, which shows MMKV is a great uh, solution to store your data on a device. It's a lot faster than most other libraries. Um, but one thing is that local first came up uh, a lot of the times on my Twitter bubble, but look at this. People have pretty much never heard about local first. So what the F is local first? Uh, we should definitely talk about this. So don't feel bad if you haven't heard about it. Uh, we're gonna do more about this trend in 2024. Not a lot of words about deployment as well. Um, it's simply EAS build is on the climb. If you check out the usage, people, yes, still use manual uh, submission with Xcode, but most people are now using EAS build. It's climbing up and it's probably going up as well. EAS submit at the same time. People are also most interested in EAS build. So Expo application and services are on the climb and we're gonna see more of them in the future. Additionally, we will see definitely something changing here because people really don't like the manual submission. So most people are still using it because probably they have traditionally used it, but they're now switching to other solutions like EIS build and EIS submit because people really, developers want to code. They don't want to hassle with the submission process and they just want to set up one service and that probably is going to be EAS in the future.
In terms of React Native tools, we have config plugins at the top. I already talked about them like a minute ago. So these are probably the most interesting uh, tools for developers and I can highly recommend them. The usage is not yet that high because I also like the first time here in this study or in this state of React Native, but the Expo CLI usage is a bit growing. Expo Go is in here. That might probably actually decline in the future thanks to Prebuild and CNG, but a lot of Expo tools in here uh, and I'm pretty sure we're going to see more about that in the future. In the React Native alternatives, um, it's pretty hard to see a clear picture. I actually gave a comment myself on this category, but this survey is the state of React Native. So people are not interested in the other stuff. Usually they are using React Native. They are React Native developers. Yes, some people use SwiftUI, Kotlin Multiplatform, Jetpack Compose. But overall, I think we're going to see a bit of a decline. We already see the decline here of Cordova, um, Ionic Capacitor of these web-based solutions as React Native becomes like the golden standard for web developers. In the resources section, well, we see a lot of people are still using the official docs or the expo docs. I hope next year we're gonna see galaxies in here. At least I think I'm somewhere included. I'm, I'm think like, yeah, no. Yes, here is rocket ship. Oh, there's actually a higher ranking. And also, yeah, I'm, I'm also listed here as a creator after Theo and William, which is a, a pretty much an honor, but also great other people, Katalin, Vadim, um, so many great people in here. It just shows that a lot of people are interested in React Native and trying to push it forward. And I just want to highlight one thing that Sebastian from This Week in React said, there's never been a better time to learn and use React Native. In terms of opinions, it's great to see that most people agree that React Native is moving in the right direction. Uh, most people here in the center agree or they even strongly agree that React Native is moving in the right direction. Um, building React Native is overly complex right now. I feel like it is just as complex as building web applications. There is also a lot of confusion in that. So yeah, some people agree. Most people disagree that it's overly complex. And people are also happy with the change or the changing speed in the ecosystem. However, the biggest React Native pain points are interesting. We got uh, debugging at the top. We got unmaintained packages, dealing with native code, upgrades. Um, all of these things that are people still confused about. But the interesting thing is that Expo is doing something about almost all of the biggest pain points. They're improving debugging, not really maintain pages, but they do custom modules. They improve upgrades with Expo. So it's really interesting to see what are the biggest pain points and how the companies currently on the market are tackling them or where maybe is space for even another company to improve the experience. And now we come to the conclusion. So the conclusion from software management from Kasper is that last year was a good year for React Native and I completely agree with that. But he also said something interesting and that is it's hard not to say that we are living in the best years of React Native so far. And I think we can all agree to that. And also, really, this is a great quote. He also says that I like to define the current state of React Native as stable, but definitely not boring. And that exactly represents what's going on in the React Native ecosystem right now. So we come to my conclusion and let me just recap a few facts. React Native might hit version one this year. The new architecture and big performance gains will be rolled out. We will see React server components working with React Native. Expo Router version four will be released, marking the start of a universal React framework. Expo is improving on all critical areas of developer experience, including debugging. And Metro and Microsoft and other companies are improving on a lot of packages and care deeply about the progress of React Native. So with all of these things going on, it's easy to see how this might actually become the best year for React Native. And as it's the best year, it's also the best year to get into React Native if you haven't done so far. It's the best time to put more resources into building apps. It's time to uh, educate the people at your company to learn more about React Native and just getting on the train while we're on our way to React Native version one. I really encourage you to don't get fooled by the shiny promises of Flutter. I heard people asking this on a pretty much all of my videos. What about Flutter? It's so high in the popularity rating. Yeah, but are companies actually using it? Are the apps actually great? I don't think so. If you enjoy Flutter, cool. 
continue using it. But most companies and most people these days and also most jobs are about React Native. Of course, there are more jobs about PHP and Laravel, but I mean, in terms of building apps with cross-platform frameworks, React Native dominates. So whether it's for building your own app, building your company's app, rebuilding your company's app, React Native should pretty much be the default in 2024 to build your app. I'm really excited for 2024 and what's coming out this year. I can't wait to see Expo Router version 4, the improved debugging capabilities, but also all the things that Matter and other companies are working on and improving regarding React Native. So I really think 2024 is going to be the best year yet for React Native. What are you most excited about in the React Native world? Did you take part in this survey? Let me know in the comments what you are looking for and what you truly hope to see in 2024 in the React Native world. If you also want to see some companies using React Native, I will pin a video for you here where the biggest companies are actually using React Native and here's another video that you can continue watching if you enjoy my content. So stay subscribed and I will catch you next time. And until then, happy coding, Simon. <laughs>